I don't pursue objects. They just happen. They occur in some serendipitous manner. And I think that living with the works by the people who create the things that I feel strongly about is essential as an expansion of what I do. I made this room into a breakfast room because I wanted the functional pottery to be visible and I wanted the functional pottery to be used. This is John Parker Glick well-known American potter. And he had a pottery in Farmington, Michigan. He ran a functional pottery. And this is just a small jar. Behind me is an early punch bowl from about 1950, before he did this very illustrious batik-like surfaces. You can see it's much duller than the other works. But the Michael Gross cabinet will probably never leave because it's so heavy. It's wood and ceramics. My house is 1847, and it's near Britain House Square. It's two small houses joined together by a garden. One house is basically my residential house. The other house is my library. I'm not sure that I would call myself a collector. I think I would call myself an educator. And I was totally mesmerized by the fact that people were spending time making objects and working with their hands. I had the idea for the first course in the history of contemporary crafts. I went to Harvard, I went to Yale, I started to talk to professors at Penn. Nobody wanted to do the research. The president of the Philadelphia College of Art said, Helen, you're gonna give the course. I started building my library at that time. My library it houses a monograph library, a jewelry library, museum collections and public collections. And when curators come here to use the library, I have only one rule that no book may leave the house. The little room behind us was a bathroom that was over the Mark Burns ceiling, which is downstairs on the first floor. We turned that bathroom into an extension of the library. I have an essay in progress over here, uh, which is overdue, <laughs> but I'm always overdue. You know, I have all these books from all the artists that I've dealt with for, what, 40 years at least? Is it more than 40 years? It's, 50, it's 55, 60 years I've been working. I opened my gallery, people would come, they would talk, they'd have a glass of wine. It was really a kind of academic hub. It began drawing from a regional circle, and then suddenly it became national. I did a Volca show, I had Lenore Tony, I had Mia Mazzucato, I had Patti Warashina. And before I knew it, I was putting together a collection of American crafts for the Hermitage. They were supposed to keep the exhibition on view for three months, it's still up. Nothing was planned, it all just happened. It happened through friendships, through discussions, through people living here, and suddenly it was like a geyser. And it was great. The house has been really interesting. There have been constant house guests. Richard Shaw lived here, Rudy Stoffel lived here, Wendy Ramshaw, Heiss Spocker, Marvin Lepofsky. I mean, I could go on and on. Lenore Twenty slept on a mat between our bedroom and the study because she didn't want to sleep alone in the guest room. <laughs> so the dining room, in my way of thinking, is a post-World War II period American craft room. It's not a conscious period room, but there is a sensibility about it. These are my service plates, and they were made by Robert Winokur, and he made them in two heights. I have a collection of Fred Wall spoons that encourages a kind of discourse at the dinner table. Everybody picks them up. They've never seen spoons like this. We've had wonderful guests here, but it was not just for artists and poets and architects, it was also our family room. This chair is Nakashima. 
This chair, these four chairs are Jerry Osgood, and the table is T. Robs John Gibbings. Originally, I had eight T. Robs John Gibbings dinner chairs, but they had a bad karma. I said that? That my life is not ordinary? Well, it isn't ordinary. You know, I have never taken a vacation at a beach. I have never gone on a voyage or anything. My life is devoted to my passion for modern and contemporary crafts. It has dominated everything that I do. It has dominated the people that I see. It has dominated the artists that I visit. It has dominated the correspondence that I have. It has dominated my telephone calls every day of the week. It has moved me into realms that I never thought I would be in. And the house has been like a hub. But I wanted to live with works that were made by people who had passion. I could buy a chair or a chest or a set of dishes, and I knew who made them. And that was, for me, something very special. And I love having them in my life. A very close friend told me, this is your last life. And so, if this is my last life, damn it, I'm gonna have a good time. <laughs>